Okay, scholars, thanks for tuning in. Let's take a look at some efficiency values. For a car engine, the maximum possible efficiency is 60%. But if you actually measure the efficiency, it's more like 25% as we factor in things like friction. Diesel engines can be more efficient, up to 30%, and they're known to get better, better gas mileage. Steam engines, like what you might find on an old railroad car, are much lower in efficiency. They're more like 17%, and that's an example of an external combustion engine, whereas the first two are internal combustion engines. So why can't these values become 100%? We spoke a little bit about the gas molecules and what they're doing on the uh, atomic scale here. They are pinging around in all different directions, but only some of these molecules are actually hitting the piston and doing work on it. These other molecules are hitting the sides of the cylinder, making it get hot, and we can't avoid that from happening. We can't avoid that waste heat. Ideally, we could we would have the molecules doing what's happening in A, and we could, in theory, have 100% efficiency if that were the case, but just not possible. What do we mean by efficiency? Some people will say it this way. What you get out divided by what you put in. If you get out the same as what you put into it, then you're dealing with a system that is 100% efficient. In other words, for example, if you want to get 1,000 joules of work, out of a car, then you would have to put a thousand joules of chemical energy from the fuel into it. We can, we can uh, show the equation this way. Efficiency, we'll call that E, is what you get out, which in our case we want this engine to do work in pushing our car and accelerating it. And we divide that by what we put into it. We put in heat that comes from the burning fuel. We're going to do a little substitution here. We know from today's class that work equals the heat that you put in minus the heat that goes out as a waste heat. So we're going to substitute this in for work. So what we get is work equals Q in minus Q out divided by Q in. And remember that Q is measured in joules. And that means we have joules. Oh, yeah, and Q out is also measured in joules. So as far as units go, we have joules on top and joules on the bottom. That means efficiency has no units. It's just a ratio. And so we could express that ratio as a decimal, like 0.75 would be 75% efficient. But best to convert that percentage or that decimal into a percentage. Let's take a look at an example. What is the efficiency of a diesel engine that uses 400 joules of heat to do 100 joules of work during each cycle of the engine? I'd like you to try this on your own first. So go ahead and pause the video. Now check your work with my solution. Efficiency equals work divided by heat input. It's 100 joules of work divided by 400 joules of heat input means 0.25 or 25% efficiency. Let's take a look at example problem number two. So pause it, read it to yourself, and then work through the problem, and then pre press play to see the solution. So we have efficiency equals uh, Q in minus Q out over Q in. Q in is 1500 joules minus Q out which is a thousand joules over 1500 joules. We get 500 on top over 1500 on the bottom 500 over 1,500 is 0 0.33, or 33%. And notice that the unit's joules cancels out. And I want to point out that Q in minus Q out, this is the same as work. So we're, we really are doing the same thing here as we did in the previous problem. We took the work 
and divided it by the heat input. All right, scholars, thanks for your working through these two problems. Tomorrow we're going to apply this way of calculating efficiency to a refrigerator. Okay, see you tomorrow.